Hello and welcome to December 2022 Finance Innovation Week brought to you by Blackline and various partners that we have in the industry. My name is Michael Schultz. I am Blackline's Director of Strategic Accounting and I'm going to be your moderator and host for today's webcast. Before we get going, uh, I just want to cover a couple of different things, uh, including some housekeeping. As I mentioned, this is the first installment or the very first webinar of Black Lines Finance Innovation Week, December 2022. Uh, as you can see up on your screen right now, we're going to have after this one, uh, we have seven additional webcasts between today, tomorrow, and Thursday. Uh, we want to bring some amazing content to you to wrap up your year and of course give you some of those much needed CPE credits. So hopefully you can attend uh, some more of these should you need. Uh, and as you look down at the bottom, blackline.com slash finance innovation week is how you register. Um, or just go to the same way you registered when you came to this webcast. So before I turn it over to our amazing speakers, Steve and Matt, just want to cover, cover a couple of housekeeping items. The very first one is help. If you need help, uh, there is a help widget down at the bottom of your screen. That's gonna cover a lot of your common uh, help issues that you may have. If your, if your issue simply is, you know, your, your, the, excuse me, the video freezes, the slides freeze, you can't hear anybody, uh, just try refreshing your browser. That often takes care of the issues. <laughs> uh, if you have any questions for our amazing panelists here, please get those into the Q&A uh, area. We will make sure to try to answer as many as we can, uh, but don't fret if we don't get to one of your questions because we simply will just may run out of time. Uh, don't worry, Steve and Matt will get those questions and they will get back to you. Finally, the resources uh, tab, there's some in, uh, various information in there. And then last but not least, CPE certification. This webcast is eligible for one CPE CPD credit. In order to earn that CPE CPD credit, you need to participate in at least 50 five zero uh, minutes of this webcast. And you also have to answer at least three of the four polling questions that we're going to have throughout the webcast. Again, you only need to answer three. So should you miss one, uh, don't worry. Uh, we have an opportunity to uh, miss at least one. And then should you have any questions, you can email me at cpe at transformation.blackline.com. Uh, but my goal is to get these certificates out before the holiday, so early next week uh, after all the webcasts are completed. Okay, so we're gonna start this off with answering our very first polling question. We made this one easy for everybody here in mid-December. Uh, are you there? Yes, no, and of course, no matter what, there's no wrong answers. So go ahead and just answer whether you're here. Oh, we gotta go back, okay, thank you. Got it back here. So if you can go ahead and just uh, click on the button, yes or no, doesn't really matter which one you choose because interaction is all you have to do. Once you hit yes or no, hit the submit button, and that's going to record your polling question. Uh, again, just be on for 50 minutes and make sure you get three out of the four polling questions. I see some folks are still joining. Uh, again, don't worry if you join a little bit late because you will have the opportunity to answer the rest of the polling questions. Since this one was pretty easy, we're gonna go ahead and just leave it up for just a couple more seconds for some of the later stragglers to get their poll in. And again, you know, I know I, we haven't even gotten to the content yet, but should you have questions on the content, uh, make sure to get those into the Q&A section. All right, so it looks like the majority of you have answered your polling question. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and close this one out and turn it over to Steve. So with that, let's close it out. And Steve, I'm gonna turn it over to you. All yours, buddy. Yeah. Thank you, Michael. Good, uh, good morning and good afternoon. Thank you everyone for being here and joining us today. Uh, really look forward to sharing some insights and uh, things that maybe would be able to help you with your optimization journey. Uh, very quickly, I'm Steve McKechnie. I'm RGP's Global Practice Leader, um, and it's a privilege to be here. It's also a privilege uh, to introduce Matt Kroll. Uh, he's been a fantastic partner, key to this journey, and critical to HICMA's success. Matt. 
Yeah, perfect. Thank you so much, Steve. I cannot tell you how excited I am to be here with all of you today. So with that said, I love a good gathering of accounting nerds. I, and I, I, I use the term nerds in, as an endearing term. We are all like-minded, energetic professionals looking forward to make meaningful changes at the processes and companies that we all work for. But, but duh, that's why we're here today, right? Like, like Steve said, my name is Matt Kroll. I'm Associate Director of Technical Accounting at Hikma Pharmaceuticals. The title's a little deceiving these days. I, I feel these days I do a, a lot of everything, everything from you know being a controller to system implementation consultant to a control owner to advocate for doing the right thing, and most importantly, making our lives easier as accounting professionals. Um, but that's a bit lengthy for a business card. But before joining, I do want to spend, uh, spend a little bit and talk about my background before I joined HICMA. Before joining HICMA in 2021, I worked at EY for 10 years. I worked at EY in Pittsburgh, I worked at EY in Amsterdam, and I worked at EY in New York City. I worked on clients ranging from FedEx, Calvin Klein, CVS, to a multinational steel manufacturer, to a $10 billion revenue uh, private grocery chain. During this time, I saw a wide range of people, process, and systems, ranging from best in class to good. As I mentioned, I started my career in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Then the firm moved me to Amsterdam for two years uh, where I served uh, FedEx, his global uh, $8 billion acquisition of TNT to extend their global reach in Europe. Uh, after my two years in Amsterdam, the firm actually moved me back to New York City uh, for three years to their professional practice department. Um, for those that aren't uh, familiar, it's pretty much their technical accounting department. So it allowed me to hone some more technical accounting skills and work with a wide range of clients and teams, uh, which was honestly super cool. Then at the end of that journey, I chose HECMA. I chose a company that felt like home. I chose a company that I felt like I could make meaningful changes at. And, you know, t for a company that had a process and, you know, needed some changes. And so I, I ultimately joined a growing company, you know, that was the right size and nature for me. I say all that because I want you to know who I am and why I'm here and why I'm so passionate and energetic about what we're, what we're about to talk about today. You know, I'm gonna hit you with a couple philosophical points here. You know, I've seen mediocre teams flourish and I've seen exceptional teams flop all because there was or was not a process and system in place that was efficient and effective. And the last thing I'll, I'll leave you with is teams that are focused on risk, process, and controls sets a tone for success. And we as leaders, it's so important for us to focus on those things. And I'll say it again, risk, process, and controls sets a tone for success. I love that line. So many of my clients use black lines. Some did not, some did. And the ones that, I, ones that did, I could see the value. When I got the HICMA, we weren't using a system like Blackline. It was it was a manual process, so it was pretty much one of the first things that we were going to do was to to you know implement a system that allowed us to have a f workflow and and organize the process a little bit. So, before we go down the the journey, I'm going to have Steve provide some background because before I got to HICMA, RGP was already assisting HICMA with some other work, and so I want. I want Steve to set the stage and he's going to go over what we call the situation and then I'll pick back up. Cool. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, we uh, hit Matt, uh, and again, like Matt said, to really set the stage. And this was prior to Matt joining Hickman. So it's been a really great coming together. Um, and so this is a little bit of pre Matt. Um, and so Blackline, uh, I, I, well, Hickman has been an R, was has been an RGB customer for some time. We have boots on the ground, and realizing a company going through lots and lots of organizational change, and with that some stress and strain on the resources, feeling more and more overwhelmed with things that needed to be done, and with those with that, that's where a lot of that strain and stress was coming in, and so we performed an end to end assessment uh, of the of, with a process focus. And so as part of that, really that pre-phase zero, if you will, around the closed processes. Some of those key findings in the processes were inconsistent. There was a lack of standardization, even a lack of a centralized closed calendar. 
and their utilization of a lot of non-standard spreadsheets and other tools. And we'll just leave it at that. But again, really stressing over uh, resources who are already over capacity. So some of the recommendations coming out of this, designing that future state, you know, want to streamline, simplify, standardize the close process. If it's a one-off, standardize it. Once you standardize it, automate it. And so really trying to relieve that strain um, and provide more capacity into those resources. All of this in mind of scaling to the future, scale for it. Um, with, and so with that, wanting to lever, leverage technology automation, um, you know, around, especially around the close optimization. And with that, coming in with a phased approach, developed a roadmap which was really well received with that roadmap phase, you know, pay, you know, match it to the pace and the available capacity of the resources. So with that, um, really developing that to really chunk it up and be able to then also, and we'll get back to the roadmap here in a little bit, but being able to make folks feel that they're not gonna be overwhelmed, they're gonna have some of that capacity back to do what they love. Um, that was that's a comment from Matt. So that when you start uh, talking about the accounting nerds, getting that capacity back to do what they enjoy doing. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so take it away, Matt. Okay. Listen. In any speaking event, I love to. You know, we're going to bookend this this presentation. Yeah. We're going we're going to start with three things I want you to remember. We're going to go through it here, and then you're going to see this slide towards the tail end of the presentation because I'm pretty much going to give you the answers to the test here. And this is by is by no means a test, but really just what we want you to to know and to take away from today. And so we'll flash these up now, like I said, and we're going to hit on them and we'll thread thread these topics throughout the presentation. But let's let's go through them real quick. So. Listen, what's in bullet, what's in red there is by no means, uh, you know, kind of monumental. It's just people, process, and systems. But it's how you engage and excite your people is the secret, right? And what you need to kind of enhance or, or work through is let them know that change is refreshing. Let them own it, right? So this is this whole people concept is leadership and leading by example and, and driving the driving the change from from an excitement perspective. And so that's what I'll I'll say now for for people we'll get into it later. For process, really, you know, once you excite your team and you have your engaged team, they're they're on it. They want they want to you want to go through this change with you as, as a team collectively, you're able to kind of unlock the resources, unlock the, the mental block and re redesign the plot, redesign the process on how you see fit, right? And, and what would be the benefits from an efficiency and effective perspective? Because if you don't unlock that mental block, it's you'll just get what you what you previously had from a manual process into the system. We'll talk about that later. The next is what we chose was we leverage RGP's expertise. Choose someone, a third party consultant that has the expertise that does this over and over again. It's only going to make your life easier from a system implementation perspective. And then the last thing is system. Lean into the system, unlock the efficiencies. To do this, you need to understand what the system can do and what your process currently is. And so we'll go into that in more detail, but we'll start with these things, we'll end with them and I'll thread them throughout. All right. All right, yeah, looks like poll. we're at the first, uh, second poll, sorry, not first, second poll. Uh, great start, gentlemen. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the rest of this webcast. Um, but as I mentioned, this is the second poll. We have to answer three and stay on for 50 minutes. Uh, to get your CPE credit. I know a couple people came in late based on how I'm seeing the numbers come in. Uh, so don't worry, if you missed that first one, it's okay. Um, this is really just to make sure you're here, uh, make sure that you're at least listening and paying attention. Uh, so if you can go ahead and just click on your radio button there and then hit submit, and then we're gonna go ahead and uh, proceed with the presentation. Um, so yeah, I, I see a couple of questions starting to come in here. And while we, uh, while, while we wait for people to answer the polling question, I'm just gonna go ahead and kick this off to, to you guys. Um, how do you, with, with respect to people, and, and this is probably a good one for Matt to start off with, um, you know, with, with respect to people, how do you excite people when there's resistance to change? That's a, honestly, that's a fantastic question. And how I would respond to that is, I think you have to know the individual, right? I think you have to know the individual in, 
and then show them you know get at their level you know if if they're resistant to change why right what's 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 the reluctancy there is it is it knowledge of you know or is it job you know productivity right but you can change how they think about things and how they do things in the future through this tool right and so that's i've 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 seen it i've seen a real life example you know on my team and someone that was reluctant to it and we were able to just you know kind of you know kind of work with them hand in hand with rgp and it was through kind of just it was almost like uh, apprehension to just change of how they were doing something and it and it wasn't until they saw the benefits that their 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 daily job was going to improve where they look back now and they're like duh like why why was i never like why what what was the apprehend like what was that apprehension i think it was just the unknown right and so i think it's all about communication it's about upfront coaching training and just knowledge sharing and the more you the more you talk about it the more you share what is that you're in it together as a team i think the the you'll 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 address that apprehension so that that's my response to that well as a follow-up what what if the apprehension is more of a uh situation where i'm i'm afraid that i'm going to automate myself out of a job well so what, I, what i would say to that is you may not how i would address it is you may not automate yourself out of a job you may automate yourself out of what you're currently doing so don't be afraid of analytics. Don't be af afraid of professional growth, right? If, if you're like, that's where you need to coach. That's where you need to use your people skills, right? And explain to the individual that this is about changing the way we look at things, changing, going from transactional to analytical. That's a big jump for some people. And it's, but I think everyone has an innate like ability to want to grow. It's just working with that individual and it may take time, right? But just stay the due course, keep working with that individual. And I promise that the time that you invest with that individual in the system, you'll see a transformation and they'll see a transformation that you'll both be proud of at the end. Excellent, thank you for those answers. Thank you everyone for submitting your polling questions and or your polling answer. And with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to, to you guys. All right, listen, guys. I'm not done with philosophical 101 yet. We're still we're still here, and then we'll get into the practicality. All right, so we're going to start with some food for thought. There's two other um, quotes that I want to flash up here real quick. A system implementation is only as good as the strength of the underlying processes and knowledge of what you're looking to address. And so let's digest that a little bit. There needs to be, and what that really is saying to me. So, the, as I was planning for this presentation, these these are the two things that stuck out to me as as I was heading down the journey to implement Blackline. You know, there there needs to be legwork done before you just go off and implement any system, whether it's Blackline or it's any system in general. While Blackline has a lot of automation functionality, if you don't understand the process, your current process, and where improvements can be made, all you're going to do is move a manual process into a system. And you're still going to have that manual process so it's it's on us you and your team from a leadership perspective to have to come together share your collective knowledge of the process so you can unlock the benefits within blackline i emphasize team and we'll get into that but that kind of talks about what um the the question i just answered but and so the second one so big picture mindset is good but if you're not detail oriented there's execution risk so, okay, the first one's talking about planning. This one's talking about execution risk, right? And so while we're all visionaries, you know, very varying degrees of visionaries, we're at this conference wanting to learn, we're wanting to develop, and we're wanting to improve. We have to, but we have to be detail-oriented. Success does not come without diligence. So in this case, it requires preparation and documentation of the approach. We as leaders have to set time aside to develop a roadmap as as Steve was talking about earlier, and we'll get into that roadmap later, but it's important, important. So our teams and our executives depend on us to have a plan and to execute that plan. All right, now we can step away from Philosophical 101 and we can start to get into the weeds a little bit. So we're on that bo the bottom yeah, section Matt, of the slide. Yeah, what's up, Steve? Yeah, I was gonna say on that roadmap, I stopped myself earlier because I knew this part was coming up, but one of the things that you and your team did really well was leveraging that roadmap as part of the communication vehicle, of course, yeah. you know, because this was just like you can 
a lot of folks that uncertainty, change isn't easy, but it's like, here's that roadmap. Here's what we're doing now. Here's what's coming up. Here's the pace of change. And for a lot of folks, it's like, what next? And to your question earlier, Michael, this was folks not being concerned about getting automated out of a job. It's like, well, I'm going to get my time freed up yep. so that I can do the things that I love. I, I'm an accountant. I want to be that numbers detective. I don't want to have all my time spent on the administrative side. Now I get to get back to what I really love doing. And that roadmap was a, has continued to be a very effective tool for folks knowing where am I now and what's coming next. I think I totally agree, Steve. I think from a leadership perspective, any journey you're starting down, you need to have a plan, right? And yeah. when you can educate and communicate that plan to your team and they know that you have control of the situation and where you're going, that 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 will speak volumes to the app apprehension and you'll be able to prove and show this is the journey that we're on. This is the pace mm -hmm. that we're on. This is what we're trying to do. And it only show, it will only bring together upfront communication and momentum from the t entire strength of the team, not just, you know, not, ju not just from a leadership perspective. This whole thing is about garnering collective team strength and, and everyone leaning into this and everyone coming together to use the knowledge of, of their existing process to make this, make, make this a success. So, so let's go through, we're going to go through these three bottom points, know your processes, identify your weak spots and risks, and then, then that allows you to establish that roadmap to success. So know your processes. As I mentioned above, it, you have to know the strength of the existing processes and be de detail oriented. So what, what does that require? It re requires you asking good questions, knowing the desired mm -hmm. outcome. So what I mean by knowing the des desired outcome is, you need to educate yourself on what black line can do. What are, what are the opportunities? What, what outcome do you ultimately want to get to? And then you need to help drive the team to get there and, and to, keep, to keep pace in the, the momentum. What RGP helped us do was know our process, that first bullet point. RGP assisted us in developing the backbone of our monthly closed checklist step by step. So it was it was pretty much a detail orient it was it was as detail oriented as you can get. It was task number, it was task description, it was purpose of the task, it was instructions of the task, due dates, whether it's monthly, quarterly, annually, prepare reviewers. So people really understood why and what they were doing on a monthly basis. I was new to Hickma at the time and it was that was all ramping up when I was getting here. And so when I saw that, I was like, oh my, this is great. Like I have an opportunity to do bullet point number two. One, I was able to figure out the process pretty quickly by reading it. And then two, I was able to identify the weak spots and risks by either asking questions or, you know, kind of reviewing it from a skeptical eye. And so after we pretty much had the monthly framework built, you know, it was time to assess our situation. Like, what, where were we at? You know, having the close process laid out step by step was just the groundwork, and that truly allowed us to understand the DNA DNA of our monthly close process before we moved into automating certain functionalities. And so, for me, right, it, knowing what we do on a monthly basis and knowing that the team understands their process was so paramount. And for me, it was like, I, okay, where are the weak spots? What do what do we need to look at? What do I need to uncover? What's going on? And, you know, sometimes history gets in the way of what we're trying to accomplish. And so I wanted to make sure by, by questioning, you know, and asking the team and, and allowing them to educate me that, like, we had a robust knowledge of our process. So then we could move on to establishing the roadmap, which was really just the prep to, to get to the, the system implementation. And so, you know, what I would say and what Steve has said so far is, you know, this whole roadmap is about phasing and focus. You don't have to rush this process, but you do have to have a plan. You can be flexible as you go through it, but you just need micro goals. You know, it's nice to go live, but any system implementation needs enough time preparation to, to before you get to that point. Because like I said earlier, you don't want to move a manual process into a system and then you just have a manual process. So what I would suggest in establishing this roadmap, you know, just start somewhere, start today, right? Be realistic, understand your competing priorities within your organization. And for me, I just, you know, I love small wins, you know, which bodes well to being detail oriented, but, you know, find your micro goals. They could be daily, they could be weekly, they could be monthly, but get those wins, right? You have to follow up on, you know, your plan 
And if you if you're continuing to have that diligence, you know the the big picture will be on track. So, you know, so we built the roadmap as Steve was saying in phases. It was simple. It, it was really just a simple chart that was kind of like weekly. What were we going to be doing? Where did we want to be from a pacing perspective? Where we, whether we were doing account reconciliations in our first phase, tasks in our second phase, journal entries in our third phase. But we were able to at least hold ourselves accountable. And so a key item. That accountable word is so important, and I, I want to emphasize that a little bit. So a key item to consider here is assign, a, assign ownership to the team, right, and check in on them. You know, have them do some do some homework on, on the different modules. Have them watch, you know, come to conferences like this and, and learn because it's only going to engage them. And then as you're going down the journey with them, plan with them, set expectations, show them what best in class looks like. And I promise if you excite your people, if you train them, if you support them, and you follow up with them, they will not disappoint. The team will have a collective success. So we can move on to the next phase where we get into the, the implementation. Yeah. So the implementation is the fun part. So you've done a lot of, lot of great work to get to this point, right? And so now you start to see um, where do you go from here, right? And so who, you know, who was involved in this process? I had everything from the the CFO to the controller all the way to the staff account and in other other teams as well too to make sure that we were all on the same page and so what's our story and how did we do it so I want to explain one thing before we go here I work I work for Hikma globally but I specifically work on Hikma US and so while it was Hikma's US vision to implement Blockline for the benefits Corporate absolutely supported us, but they also wanted to use the U.S. as the base case before we expanded globally. It made sense, right? Beta, beta trial and error before we, we went on a global expansion journey. They wanted to see the benefits before we bit off more than we could chew. I say this because while I believed in the system, there was added pressure to execute here. And so, spoiler is, I love pressure. It drives me, and we weren't, and we weren't gonna fail. In my mind, the system spoke for itself. It was foolproof. I just needed to execute. So we executed based on the roadmap. We assigned roles and responsibilities. We leveraged RGP's expertise in the design. We designed block line based on our knowledge. We trained our people through deep dives and we provided support and best practices. Honestly, these are the intangibles that overlay that roadmap, overlay getting it done and getting it, you know, you know, getting to a product in the system that we were proud of. And so one thing we haven't talked about yet is in great detail is RGP. For me, they were a great champion in in this journey for us to implement um, Blackline. And what I loved about them was their ability to provide real-time education and training and different ways to think about things. But at the end of the day, they would always provide their best-in-class example of what you should or should not go for, pros and cons. And in most cases, we agreed with their conclusion. It was It was pretty... You know, snap fast. We we're like, okay, cool. This makes a whole lot of sense. Uh, like, we'll, we'll go with this. And so we were able to efficiently draw conclusions and move on from from a design perspective in UAT. And so, if you don't mind, I just want to start. I just want to stop for a second and do a couple uh, quick shout outs real quick. In the crowd, there's a couple of people from RGP um, that I want to shout out real quick. So Melissa from RGP. Melissa was our client representative. She had been working with Hikma prior to when I joined here, but, you know, Melissa, you never gave up on us. You believed in us. And I just want to say, you know, thank you really quickly. Also in the crowd today is Michelle and Karen from RGP. I personally want to thank you guys for the success that we had on this project. Your positive energy, your robust knowledge, and your technical gifts is what really drew this to completion. And like I said earlier, system implementation is only as powerful as the understanding of the process. And your guys' gift to understand the black line implementation process so smoothly really helped us set it up for success. So I know everyone was on mute, but if you could humor me and do a small round of applause for Melissa, Michelle, and Karen, that'll make my day. And honestly, that's just hysterical. If any of you guys actually did applause, thank you so much. I'm sure Melissa, Michelle, and Karen could hear it back at their home. So very good. All right, so let me let's level set. So we talked about a couple of things, right? We talked about executing. If we look at the the red bullet points there, we talked about executing based on the roadmap. Check. We talked about assigning roles and responsibilities. Check. 
we just went over leveraging RGP's expertise in the design check. And we, we just talked about, or we talked about the design block line based on our knowledge. The two bullet points that we haven't talked about yet is the last two that say trained and provided. Trained our people through deep dives and provided support and best practices. So let's talk about that. So if you want to use an analogy and let's say I wanted to bake a cake, but you know, I'm not a good baker. I'm not really confident on how to bake a cake, but so what would I do if I didn't know how to bake a cake? I would reach out to someone who bakes cakes daily, right? And so the reason why I bring up that analogy is RGP does black line implementations daily. And, and, and so you really want to know someone that, that has that ability to, you know, has that knowledge, has that repetition, that, that has, you know, that hands-on live experience. And so where we were able to train our people so successfully was with our with the energy with and with best practice examples. And so RGP would lead live sessions with screen sharing and they would demonstrate, you know, either how to do shortcuts, how to define or define certain um, settings, how to tweak dashboards, how to set up system, how to set up account reconciliation, certification thresholds, different kind of, uh, you know, tweaks within the system, how to bulk certify, really things from an automation perspective really helped us kind of get to the finish line effectively. So it was those sessions that we had with RGP and we had an engaged audience who wanted to learn in real time before going live. So it really, yeah, go on. I I sort of liked one of the sessions. It was an hour session and you were on it and about 30 minutes in, you're like, hey, when are we gonna show that reconciliation? Because we had actually had live data in the system, production data. And you're like, and we're like, we'll get there, we'll get there. Michelle was doing a great job. Forty-five minutes in, and, and you're like, hey, uh, when are we gonna get that reconciliation done? We we only got fifteen minutes left in the call. Uh, Ten minutes to go. We do the reconciliation. It's done in less than five minutes. And just the relief in your voice was like, okay, this is great. Because what you know, thinking it was gonna take a whole hour to do one reconciliation and it's done in less than five minutes, and it's with your data, your people, your accounts, and you're like, oh, so this is really pretty cool. But to that change management thread that you've been pulling on throughout, your folks are like, this is great. I don't have to spend an hour in a spreadsheet when the system is gonna automate a lot of the work that's just taking me away from what I love doing. It was fun, forgive me for sort of I want to I want to bring that to life. I love that, Steve. I love that example. I was I was almost like stressed and sweating. So RGP, <laughs> what 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 Steve is saying is, so we had to do a we did a live demo, right? Mm-hmm. To show, and to get to really educate the people to get live buy-in, and it was an hour-long training, and we were going through some various like setups, tweaks, and 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 uh, within the system, and we never like it's almost like they were putting off showing us a reconciliation and i was like guys like you we got 10 five minutes left in this presentation can you show us just the automation here they're like oh that's the easy part i was like what do you mean that's the easy part we get there michelle from rgp pulls it up and she was showing us a prepaid reconciliation where we where she had set up a schedule of like hey if you had a 1.2 million dollar prepaid it was going to amortize every 12 months and you set up once and it's just this recurrent thing it just system certifies every time and blew me away because I was like, and they, she pretty much showed us how to prepare it, how to sign off as a preparer and reviewer. And it was done in a matter of like two minutes. So imagine if you have like hundreds of those that you just wanted to crush through. And I was like, wow, that would take us like, you know, in, in, in Excel, like one, there would be risk, but it, it just blew, blew me away. And so I, I loved that session. That was, that was a good one. So, cool. well, let, let's talk about real quickly. I'm going to hit on these, these bottom two points before we go into into the next slide. So what we've currently implemented at HICMA is task manager, account reconciliations and compliance. And the team here is just incredibly proud of those. And so we'll talk about a little bit more in detail on some of the benefits on the next slide. All right, so we're gonna talk quickly about results and lesson learned of, of phase one. So as with anything, when you complete something, you, you do look back and, and figure out, you know, if we're going to expand on this globally, what what did we accomplish? What did we set out? And so some simple facts, and I've presented this um, with to Globo as well too. 
So at Hickman US, we have 350 GL reconciliations that we had to do monthly that was previously all done without a tool. 60% of those now system certified. And so can you imagine of those 350, they had to be done manually before. 60% of them are now done within the system. And the amount of time savings and from a capacity perspective is, is truly mon monumental. 15% of those were, as we dug into them, we're able to figure out either low activity or low risk. We're able to move them from, from monthly to quarterly. 20% of reduction in the in the monthly close process. Truly, uh, the the team loves it. I love it. It's 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 unbelievable. The CFO loves it. Um, in in the reduction of hours that we're able to focus and be more analytical, as we were talking about earlier with that example, has really really helped. And and people kind of believe in it. And now it's a journey. Now it's all about process improvements. And what else can we do? That person that that's the that's the thread that I want to bring through here really quickly. That person that was apprehensive at first in that, that and when we sat down with that individual and, and we're like hey it's going to be a journey but i promise you you're going to go from transactional to analytical pretty quickly that person is one of it's a very meaningful you know kind of lesson that i'll take away is it that individual grew through this process as did i and as did the team but that individual is now thinking hey you know I no longer have, now what what next right what 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 can we do right and so it's this it, it's it's this change agent change men mentality um, process. I want to pause really quickly before we go into goals accomplished accomplished. There was one question, Steve, that I want to hit. I want you to hit on really quickly, and because I think it's an important reason to pause. Um, someone said, "What's the difference between RGP and Blackline? Do you mind hitting on that really quickly? Sure, real quickly. Blackline provides a solution. Um, we're, Black, the black line solution. Uh, RGP, we're not a bar, we're not a reseller, but we're an implementation partner with Blackline. And so we provide a lot of the implementation services, be it around the training, the experience, things like that to really help you as a business decide what is the best solution for you. You know, we can leverage leading and industry practices, and, but Blackline is there uh, providing a fantastic software solution. Um, and then we can talk about at another time the support that Blackline gives after go live. Perfect. There's another question on um, is Blackline a SOX scope application? Um, one thing that I'll say is, you know, I'm not paid by Blackline. I'm not paid by RGP. I, I'm just here talking about the, the, the system and the process that I believe in. Um, what I'll say from my perspective on the SOX controls is that, um, you know, I spent 10, 10 years, 10 plus years at EY. Um, plenty of companies have Blackline or tools of similar nature. And of course, you can have SOX, SOX uh, approved controls. And what I'll say is, while I'm currently presenting during this presentation, um, our auditors, PwC, have read-only access to Blackline and are currently in the midst of their interim um, control testing and are actually doing, they have read-only access into our, our reconciliations there of the, and they can go look at any of the months that we've reconciled from read-only access and show that any of our individuals uh, from a prepare reviewer perspective have signed off on them. All the support is there in a one-stop shop and I no longer have to get nagged um, to say, hey, can you provide this reconciliation? Can you show that your controls operating effectively? It's all right there at the touch of a finger, fingertip. So that 100% visibility and oversight, while that's helpful internally, it's also helpful externally as well too. So that visibility and oversight is, is all about pro risk processing controls. So I just wanna to touch on that really quickly. Um, someone said, what does system certified mean? Great question. System certified is the automation and logic that sits within Blackline. And so let's, it, it's kind of goes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring up the example that I did earlier of a prepaid reconciliation because it's an, it's an easy example. Um, let's say you have a, a prepaid that is $1.2 million and it's going in that that prepaid is the only prepaid in that account. You can have as many prepaids as you want, but just for the simplicity of this example, I want to explain it. So if it's a $1.2 million prepaid over, over 12 months, it's going to amortize um, 100K per month, right? And so if you set that up in the first month of January and you set up that schedule within Blackline and in your ERP, whether it's SAP, uh, whatever, whatever you may be using, Oracle, if you 
record the entry and you can you can have that entry be pushed to uh to uh, sap or to oracle from blackline but let's say you wanted to essentially debit expense and credit your prepaid 100k for that that monthly amortization next month and as long as you record that that entry every single month the way the system is going to work the way blackline is going to work is you're never it's it's going to decrease that that supporting uh, reconciling item by 100k each month so next month uh, at the month end, the month end of january when you go into that reconciliation you're going to see that the supporting balance that schedule is now 1.1 million and your gl balance is 1.1 million if how you set it up within the system matches the gl balance it's just going to system certify so you set it up in such a way that there's logic behind it so it just it it, it saves you some manual time having to go through and, and manually manual manually certify that so i hope that helps Okay, uh, let's talk real quick. Let's pick back up with some goals accomplished. So a couple of things that uh, we did was we were able to standardize timeliness. We were able to address and enhance dashboards for the oversight of the closing process, which was super awesome. The one thing that I would say previously to implementing uh, Blackline, we historically had a uh, external audit finding of timeliness of reconciliations. We no longer have that because we're able to follow up with individuals, see what's pending, see what's outstanding. So all of our GL reconciliations um, are reconciled timely because we're able to follow up with people or it's set automated reminders so people don't forget about them as well too. And so the lessons learned, if, if you haven't uh, figured out yet, the powers and the people of the process and getting the system um, set up the way you want it. So. And what is not on this slide is the amount of comfort that the HICMA US CFO and I have about the process being controlled by a workflow and a system. And I know we're just talking about um, reconciliations here, but we can also talk about tasks. We can al also talk about journal entries. There's a lot of benefits within Blackline, but I'm just, we're specifically talking about the reconciliations here. The benefits we're seeing from an internal and external audit perspective are starting to come to life as i talked about earlier you know pwc is currently doing their interim work and it's they're able to just check the box on what they're doing because i know from from a visibility and oversight perspective that all of our recs are out there they're all signed off on time they all have supporting documentation and all of our controls are now um, operating effectively and the intangible that you can't put on screen is the amount of stress and headache that has all relieved has really truly been helpful so i've I just want to talk about that really quickly because him and I talk about it a lot and it's uh, it's been a helpful tool for us. So let me move on to the next slide. All right. So what's next for you? What's next for us? Let's talk about uh, where we're currently at. So right now we are t we are in global expansion and the success story is still in the making. It's it's going. We have global support. The process is being achieved. We're rolling it out to, to more countries, which I'm I'm super excited and super proud of. Uh, I think the now that we have we've stood up um, task account reconciliations and compliance. You know, we've done a couple demos where we're screen sharing and really showing during the close process what what this actually looks like, what it actually means, and it's been really helpful for everyone to kind of see what what where the benefits are. So phase one's pretty much, that's global expansion. Phase two for us in HICMA US is, there's a couple of things that we're looking to do in, in 2023, variance analysis, which is a module within Blackline, journal entry automation, which is a module with, which is an, a module that I'm actually super, super excited about. Um, we've been working on it for a while now with RGP. Um, we're, in, we're in the process of customizing um, the journal entry process for us, um, but that'll go live for us in 2023. And then intercompany matching is really going to change the game. It's going to change the way we work, how we look at data, how we match data, really take the manual process out of um, intercompany matching and start to use some um, some automation and some robotics. So I'm super excited about that intercompany matching as well too. So it really, our, our experience to date is Blackline continues to demonstrate added value. There's There's no question about it, right? Listen, it comes at a cost, but there's value. And the value that we're talking about is comfort, control, and, and having a process in place that is systematic and addresses the risk that both the HICMA USDFO and the company care about, right? And so, and RGP continues to share its expertise to facilitate our enhanced processes. 
So we're going to go to this slide again, right? And so answers to the test, here we are, right? And we can talk about them in a little bit more detail or we can, we can knock off a couple questions, but we're back to it, right? People, process, and system. Excite your people, engage them, get them excited. That, 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 that example of that individual that I was talking about earlier, it's, it's so cool to see how that individual thinks about automation and process changes now. Change is refreshing. Let them own it. Put, put the onus on them as well, too, um, which, is, which is great from a leadership perspective. And, and everyone wins. It's a, it's a collective team effort. So process, work with your engaged team to redesign the process. Again, you got to know your existing process. You have to be detail oriented and you, and you have to know where you're going and you got to have that plan, that roadmap um, and, and leverage someone that does it. Le leverage someone that does this over and over again, because I promise you they'll have things that you weren't thinking about that'll have that'll add value to um, your process at the end. And you'll end with something that you're proud of. And then system. Lean into the system. Unlock the efficiencies. So do your do your homework, and you're doing your homework now because you're at this conference for the next couple of days. But this is where, like, you may have questions. Ask those questions because you need to ask those questions to figure out where your efficiencies are, so you can unlock them. I was so, going to pull on your PWC audit thread just a yeah, little bit let's more. Do it. Yeah, let's do it. Where there's some additional time savings for your team that they appreciate. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Because one of the things that always got me is like, here comes the audit. So who gets the short straw and has to spend the next two weeks pulling data, finding data, formatting data, get ready for the audit? Well, with Blockline, you have that clean room. The auditor can go in there. And so you've not only increased your controls, making you, your CFO, extremely happy. Now the external auditor goes in there and your folks don't have to spend a couple of weeks getting all the information. They go in, there's a clean room, see the completed work of the accounts assigned to them. And to your point, it's a simple matter of just check the box. Exactly, yeah. I, we literally had someone that come on at time. Mm -hmm. they, had to, they had to go find the, the docu signed or si manually signed you know, reconciliations. That, that doesn't exist anymore. And so it's because it's all sitting there in the system. Um, there's a couple of questions, so I, I, I want to start to, as we move, uh, there's a polling I, I question think, if you want to take that I really quickly. Yeah. One more polling question, okay, at least, and then I think we can get into the Q&A. Is that right, yeah, Michael? So, yeah, thanks, gentlemen. So this is our third polling question. Uh, we've almost hit 50 minutes of the presentation, but hopefully you, you, everyone sticks around mm -hmm. for the end. Uh, let's go ahead and just uh, answer this polling question. Are you still there? Are you still with us? Are you still hanging out? Uh, hopefully everyone is. Um, if you missed one, don't worry about it. Uh, after Q&A, before we wrap up, we'll still have one more, so don't fret. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, the third polling question, and you're required three out of four. Uh, before we uh, get to the, uh, the couple of Q&A, if you do have any more questions for, uh, for our great presenters, please get those in, and we can uh, make sure we get the, the questions answered. Um, you know, Steve, it was funny when you were just talking about all the preparation for the audit work. Uh, you kind of made a few hairs stand up on the back of my neck because I, I got to say, I'm definitely not disappointed to never have to do that again. <laughs> Obviously, different role now, but uh, we, even when we implemented Blackline, it was so nice to just have it, funny, my auditors were also PwC. And, you know, they, they didn't even have to be in the office, right? They could just do, do the work from wherever they were, which was, which was great. Um, so let's just go ahead and uh, while people are uh, going through this poll here, um, how long did it take to document your processes before implementation, Matt? Yeah, great question. Um, it probably took, and, and listen, they weren't starting from scratch. There, there, there certainly was some documentation that that started out, right? Um, but I think it probably took us two to three months. And it doesn't have to be the most sophisticated documentation. I think people get, you know, I'll use that word apprehensive again. Um, you just got to start, right? And as long as you just chip away at it over time, and that's what I, you know, I talk to the team all, about all the time. It's just like, it's just 
we just get, just improve something daily, right? Just it only takes but you know two three minutes to just put some words down on paper. You know we're accountants, but at the end of the day, like we we all speak you know the same language, and so just you know just writing something down was the, and that's that micro goals, right? Of just like small wins. Small wins would get you to the the big goal of getting it documented, but to it, to how long it got us to a level where we were comfortable to move forward with the system implementation, probably two to three months, but it wasn't fully dedicated for those two to three months. It just, it just was, you know, you know, a couple, you know, 30, 40 minutes a day, just chipping away at it. So, and then following nice. up with the team, just re, just assign responsibilities to and check in on them. So, yeah. Well, yeah, because, you know, it's easier for the person who's actually in the weeds to do the to do the documentation rather than somebody trying to come up uh, uh, on top of them to try it, to figure it, it out. Right? Exactly. Hey, I want to talk real quickly about what you were talking about there with the PwC with the external audit request. I don't know why, but like previously before Blackline, well, I know why. Previously before Blackline, I used to have like this like stress or I'd like, oh, boy, what reconciliation are they going to pick? Because you can imagine that like for me <laughs> trying to trying to run down 350 like – reconciliations each month was was a time consuming process and it's just manual so there was risk there and now like like you said they have access to the clean room like pick anyone you want go for it uh, like i know they're all there and so but like up until so we implemented um may of 2022 this year and so now it's just breathing easy because we know it's it's all in one spot so yeah i think i think what's important to add to just you know coming in from a black line perspective is you know, if, if, you're, if you're RECs, your journal entries, whatever it is, if it's in process, the auditors cannot access it. It's only the external yeah, audit right. role, and there's, there's like 13 or 15 different roles in Blackline. Don't, don't quote me on that number. But um, your, your auditors can only see it after it's been completely through its review. So if you're going through, you know, you, you know you're training a staff person or whatever it is, right, and you, you just don't agree with the re recon, don't worry, it's not going to go to the audit team. Yeah, um, good point. Good point. Yeah, before I came to this call, honestly, we're it's you know December thirteenth. We're we just finished up the November close, right? And some reconciliations are still being completed. Like I like I said in the slide, fifty like it, I I wanted to check my math, but it was like fifty eight percent were system certified this month, and so but there's still there's still some that are in that process of being completely certified through prepare, approve, and review uh, workflow thresholds. But until they get to that final completed state, is when PwC or anyone externally can can see it, and even if you leave internal like review comments, those all get deleted as well too. Just FYI, so Absolutely. it's all, it, it's it's a clean version by the time it goes to a uh, external source. Yep. Okay. So I, lo I love this next question, um, just because I love more so. I love the answer. Um, after implementation, how much effort does it take for your IT system administrators to manage the application? A very little. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, very yeah, little. And I, I want to separate out IT, the load on IT greatly reduced, but also there's the black line system administrator, which is separate from IT. I want to make sure that answering the question uh, properly. So with IT, your dependency as a business greatly reduced, but you do want to have a business person in the role or roles of your black line system administrators. And I know, Matt, you have some of those duties, but you never yeah. just want to have one person, because if it's just one person, they're not allowed to get sick, go on vacation or anything else. So. But nonetheless, like, I, I do want to separate, mm -hmm. I want to, uh, you know, draw out a myth there. Like, Blackline has great functionality as a standalone tool. The data that is interfacing to and from Blackline is not technical data. That's why I answered the question very little because you're talking about flat files that are coming from, and they can go through, you know, any sort of the, the the IT interface, which honestly doesn't take too long to set up. Um, it, it takes time and focus, but it's like once you get past it, it's set up for, for life. Um, but it's not a complicated process. So I just want to I just want to just explain that really quickly. What's what's coming to Blackline for us is a subledger flat file. GL balance flat file that interfaces every 30 minutes and an hour from SAP to Blackline. And the next phase will be journal entries going um, from Blackline to um, to SAP. But again, not technical data, pretty much just GL accounts, cost centers, and, and that's it. Excellent. 
Well, I hope we have time for some more questions, but uh, I do want to get to this slide. Steve, is there anything uh, you want to talk about? Well, I know you briefly talked about uh, RGP, but uh, anything you want to add as, as your little commercial here as we get toward the end? Because you, know, you as an amazing sponsor of, of Blackmon, I want to you know, make sure you get, you get your part out here too. I appreciate it. I'll be very, very quick, and I love it when I say this. RGP is also a black line customer. And as a client of ours said, oh, so you eat your own dog food. It took me a while to understand that, but I think it's a good thing. So we really appreciate uh, everybody being here. Really appreciate Matt and Hikma, fantastic client of ours, and really uh, have enjoyed this journey so far and look to a lot more of the journey to come. Excellent. Well, we still have a couple more questions. I'm going to kick over to the last poll so everyone can make sure they get their credit. Um, but let's go ahead and do the, these last couple questions here. Um, can you describe the variance analysis functionality a bit more so we can picture it? Yep. St Steve, you want to take it or I can either one? Go ahead. Yep. So variance analysis is it's a tag on to account reconciliations, but pretty much what it is 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 for anyone that has ever done a trial balance flux before um, at the GL level, where you can group them at a higher level, you're pretty much just automating that process. So there's there's a flow behind it. So you're assigning accountability. So let's say you want to figure out why a let's stick on that prepaid why prepaids went down a hundred thousand dollars this month for that particular GL account. You know, the person that's assigned to that GL would know, hey, it's just simple amortization of that 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 prepaid. And so you would just type it in really quickly. Hey, you know, the prepaid to whatever consultant or whatever uh, that we had went down by 100K because we debited expense this month. Um, and so that all just rolls up to either the controller or the CFO to have a holistic visibility to, to drill down into why is either prepaids down this month or why is uh, why is AR fluctuated so much and so it gives you the ability to aggregate data at a way that um, has some workflow behind it so and so individuals take ownership of the fluctuations um, and you're able to have the information at your fingertips so we haven't got yeah, to that thing. Yeah, we haven't got to that. That's next on our list. So, but uh, I'm 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 excited about it. So, it, it really is a great tool. And the one thing I'll add, uh, and having been a former user of the tool, um, you know, yes, it does everything that you say. But the other thing it does is it provides it in real time. Um, so whenever those balances are getting loaded into Blackline, and whether you're doing it daily, weekly, hourly, whatever that is, um, you know, those balances are changing. And so, you know, with for me, and I don't, my example was, you know, prior to having Blackline, we would go through that flux, but we would do it like usually within a couple hours of going into like our flash meeting. And so it's like, oh, do we have all the information? Is everybody here that we need to get a question from? Um, but having that in real time was was very important. Um, exactly. And with that, we are out of time. We have, we have hit the hour, um, and you know, I do want to say, Matt. And Steve, thank you so very much for, for being part of this. Uh, you know, we really can't do events like this without amazing customers like HICMA and, of course, our strategic alliance partners like RGP. So we're really excited that you were able to join us. I also want to thank everybody here who was on the call. Um, you know, as I mentioned at the top, for those of you who may have come a little bit late, uh, in one hour we're going to have another one of these. Uh, we have two more today. As you can see, some of the topics today, tomorrow, and Thursday, uh, all of these are CPE eligible. So if you, you know, if you haven't had an opportunity to get all your CPE for the year, we're giving you eight for free. Uh, quite a deal, uh, if you ask me. So with that, again, thank you all very much. Really do appreciate it, and I look forward to seeing you at a future event in the, future, uh, in, in the near future. Thanks again. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone.